a small amount of practice can help us achieve the samatha and vipassana small amount of practice is enough then the plenty of theories and plenty of lectures that is what i i just now i read sahasam api te vacha anatha pada sanghita ekam athapadam seyu this uh, particular form of uh, mental culture has continued for the past 2500 years people are still not fully aware of it many people are aware of that but not people when i say that uh, everybody am in my view many people are already aware worldwide these things samatha and vipassana they are practicing also in fact in fact they are practicing more and more than uh, uh, as i think uh, the, but still people are not aware of the samatha and uh, vipassana the reason for the lack of precise knowledge on this important subject is difficulty in gaining access to authentic source of information because uh, people do not know what is said exactly in pali literature what is said exactly in sanskrit uh, buddhist literature about the samatha and vipassana in pali meditation is known as the bhavana this bhavana is an integral part of the buddhist religious doctrine and practice the references to theories and practices of this bhavana are scattered throughout the buddhist canonical texts and commentaries there are so many places you will find the references of the bhavana in canonical texts and commentaries which form a vast corpus of literature in pali and sanskrit in fact the study of the mind in ancient indian literature could be considered one of the most interesting subjects of investigation if you see the ancient literature you will find this very important fact i am telling important point not only in the pali buddhist literature or sanskrit buddhist literature everywhere in ancient literature i am saying even if you take the prakrit literature our ancestors gave considerable significance about the subjects like mind and meditation particularly mind indians always gave enough attention to the study of the mind the reason for this is the reason for this importance of the mind in human history is is very obvious that because they knew that mind is the reason for everything manayeva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayo for the bandha and moksha mind is a reason the actual speculation of the mind started from upanishads and upanishads never viewed the human being as the mere composition of the physical element they say that the man is composite of psychological and physical elements later this uh, developed the talk, cognitive analysis of the chitta developed in nyaya shastra and buddhist logic also in other nyaya shastra also the ancient vedic nyaya shastra also the analysis of the chitta was started in india as it was felt very important by ancient indians when we study our literature we realize that buddhi differs from the chitta through the senses mind comes into the contact with the external objects through the senses mind gets contact with the external objects indriye indriya arthohi samanaskena gruhyate so indriyas are perceiving the indriyartha but samanaska when mind is included means mind is associated with indriyas only then indriyas can perceive the indriyartha that is the meaning of this indriye indriyarthohi samanaskena gruhyate so that is the importance of the mind we know there is a clear distinction between the mind and body in yogachara buddhism we find that uh, yogacharins gave so much importance to mind pali nikayas refer to only six type of consciousness like chakku vijnana sota vijnana gana vijnana jihwa vijnana kaya vijnana mano vijnana but the yogacharins have increased this number by adding the alaya vijnana the alaya vijnana to the buddhist theory of the mind the lankavasara sutra calls the whole system of the mental functions chitta kalpa chitta kalpa 
are Vijnanakaya. This Vijnanakaya. Lankavatara says. The great Acharya and great scholar Vasubandhu has made the philosophical expression of Buddhist idealism. Vijnapti Matrata Siddhi consisting of two chapters, Vimshika and Krimshika by Vasubandhu has been considered to be the philosophical justification of idealism. Mind can defile or purify one to oneself. It, is a, it can be bitterest enemy to you and greatest friend to you. We learn from this, from Dhammapada. Mm -hmm. Buddha says, what harm may do a foe, a foe means enemy, or a hunter to a hunter, same ill-directed mind can do still greater harm. Ill-directed mind, ill-directed mind. Michha panihitam chitta, that is right. Samma panihitam and michha panihitam, ill-directed mind. So such an elaborate and clear description of the mind can be found in Buddhist literature. What good neither mother or father nor any other relative can do, a well-directed mind can do. Well-directed mind, more prosperity to us than mother and father. Because mother is above of all and father is above of all. Mata gurutara bhumi, pitocha tharascha khat. So that's what said in Yaksha Prashnas. So, but the well-directed mind can do more better than both of them. So, if therefore one speaks or acts with the wicked mind, Buddha says in the beginning of Dhammapada itself, mind is forerunner of the deeds. Mind is chief and everything is made by the mind. If therefore one speaks and acts with the wicked mind, you may deceive others, but pain pursues you. And the contrary, if one speaks or acts with the pure mind, in general, people may misunderstand you, but happiness follows you. So this is the eternal law in the beginning of Dhammapada itself, Buddha says, this is very much related to the mind. In Samyutta Nikaya also, Buddha says that by mind, the world is led. The by, by mind, world is led. By mind, it is drawn and all men own the sovereignty of the mind. Buddha says this mind, O monks, is luminous. Originally, mind is luminous, Prakashu mind. But it is defiled by taints. Defiled by the taints that come from outside. What actually Buddha says originally in Sanjyata Nikaya is Pabhasaram idam bhikkave chittam. Pabhasaram idam bhikkave chittam. Tancha agantu kehi upakkile sehi upakkili tham. It is not actually upakkili tham by the nature. It is Pabhasaram idam bhikkave. That is, you see, when Buddha says we are very happy. So we understand the nature of our mind, original nature of the mind. So we are not worried. Oh. Actually, whatever defilements, whatever problems in mind are coming from the outside. That is not the original form of the mind. So, Buddha says perfectly that Pavasaram idam bhikkave chitam, he gives an excellent inspiration, a kind of enthusiasm to us. You don't worry that actually your chitam is basically Pavasaram. Pavasaram idam bhikkave chitam, tamhi agantu kei upakkile sei upakkilita. But uneducated people, can't understand this reality. So they fall into the trap of the mind. Uneducated means uh, it is not that, uh, uh, not that this college and university education here. Because uh, we say that uh, even after learning so many shastras, one can be very low standard person. Shastran yadhitya bhi bhavanti murkha. It is said in Sanskrit. Shastranya Dhitya Pi Bhavanti Murkha. So in this way, here educated means educated uh, with this level of understanding. So that is a, a kind of education. And those who do not have such education, they fall into the trap of the mind. For them, there is no cultivation of the mind. Therefore, the total purification of mind is ultimate aim of Buddhism. Chittam Vimuchi Me. You can find such statements. 
my mind is relieved chittam vimuchime that was a joyous statement joyous uttering of the arhans tato chittam vimuchime so when chitta is vimukta then everything is vimukta that's why that chitta is a very important element it is from the point of view that buddhists are interested in the study of the mind because that is very much important why buddhists are after buddha buddhist acharyas and buddhists are interested in the mind why they are interested in the study of buddha not from the psychological point of view uh, this is the actually this is the point of view why buddhists emphasize on the importance of the mind the poly term for the mind is uh, chitta it is chitta or cheta we can say both you can find chitta is derived from the ch- chiti it is a root chiti to think chiti is a think so that is why chitta manas means mana mana means mananam that is also a kind of a contemplation thinking so chitta has an awareness of objects cheti ti chitta that has the awareness of the objects that's why you can find the shanti deva describes so much about the bodh chitta in bodh charya avatar in a lucid manner in his work in his great work bodh charya avatar bodh chitta develops by the practice of the training of the mind in compassion bodh chitta develops how bodh chitta develops to a person that's what i was uh, telling earlier that the karuna is very much important in mahayana bodhicitta develops by the training of the mind in compassion see we have trained mind in so many ways but we had to train our mind in compassion that's what mahayana says shanti deva says in bodhicharya avatara so we never tried this we had to try to train our mind in compassion you see this compassion gives a lot of benefits ultimately after studying bodhi bodhicharya avatara you will understand that the person who is having this uh, compassion he will win the the world when you open up your mind and you start compassion showing compassion on the people worldly people naturally wisdom emanates from it comes out of it as long as you are not having loving kindness and compassion you may be studying so many scriptures but the wisdom cannot emanate from your mind in that ultimate state all concepts dissolve 